or a global food crisis. That's why I'm telling everyone to read the new book, Rising Prices, Empty Shelves. Warning signs that trigger the deadliest famines in history. Don't get caught unprepared when the crisis hits. This book is only available at risingpricesemptyshelves.com. You'll also get a free copy of Supermarket Survival, How to Cut Your Grocery Bills in Half. Again, that website is risingpricesemptyshelves.com. That's risingpricesemptyshelves.com. Okay, to be clear, and if you go to Infowars.com, this article just came out. It's confirmed what I told you back over the weekend. Occupy Wall Street stands in solidarity with Obama front group. Why is the official Occupy Wall Street website in league with lobbying efforts for Wall Street-backed Obama White House? Now, this is the issue. Obama ran on fighting Wall Street corruption when he was totally bankrolled by it. Are we saying John McCain's good? No. It's all out of the same elite. Just like Mitt Romney, Rick Perry, all of these people. Only Ron Paul has a true constitutional voting record, and that's why he's demonized. That's why he is attacked. And am I saying all the protesters are bad? No, these are great people coming out because they know Wall Street is bankrupting this country through derivatives and bailouts and offshoring. But we now have the official Occupy Wall Street list of demands, and it's free education, free health care. I mean, this is Soviet Union. We're bankrupt. Socialism doesn't work. Crony capitalism doesn't work. But the idea that a bunch of mega rich getting government bailouts is capitalism, so we should scrap private property is dangerous. Now, we're on the streets. I've got my reporter, Rob Jacobson, up there. He's been filing videos. He's found some MoveOn.org people and others, and they're the ones trying to run things, but they don't run it. So the mainstream media is just going to them and letting Move On, the Obama people, speak for Occupy Wall Street. And their answer is raise taxes on the middle class and pay it in austerity payments to foreign banks. And you know, these billionaires running around lecturing everybody about how they need to raise taxes on the rich. That's because they're exempt from it and want that money. So get this article out to everybody you know. Occupy Wall Street stands in solidarity with Obama front group. We are occupying the Federal Reserve in Dallas, Texas, camping out around it to draw attention to the real inner group that uses crony capitalism monopoly to take over society. This Friday, 6 o'clock, it kicks off. I'm going to be there. Bring your sleeping bag. Stay there. I'm going to drive around to other Federal Reserve outfits and then come back. And on top of that, we need you wherever you are in the country to go identify the Federal Reserve. And it's already happening. Call the media. Make sure they're there. Alternative, mainstream, you name it. Now, shifting gears, during any type of economic uh, crisis, the establishment's going to try to launch wars. And you've got Saudi Arabians being gunned down now, but the West isn't too concerned about that. You've got NATO and others talking about wanting to go into Syria. Uh, and you've got China and um, Russia vetoing that in the Security Council. That's a big deal. I'm not a fan of Syria. The point is, we don't want more wars, ladies and gentlemen. You've got Israel talking about going into Iran. You've got Assad of Syria saying if they're attacked by NATO, they're going to attack Israel and take that as an attack. And Ray McGovern, writing for ConsortiumNews.com, that's why we got him on today, and we appreciate him joining us on short notice, wrote the headline, Israel's Window to Bomb Iran. Ray McGovern is a retired CIA officer turned political activist. Uh, he worked under uh, seven presidents. He was the top morning briefer to Ronald Reagan and George Bush Sr. And, of course, he famously confronted uh, Rumsfeld on WMDs and that he'd lied and said they knew where they were in and around Tikrit. And then Rumsfeld got caught lying. And um, he's given a lot of speeches at George Washington University. Uh, and, and uh, well, he confronted Hillary Clinton there and got drug out and arrested. And uh, he joins us now. We appreciate uh, you coming on, Ray. Thanks, Alex. It's good to be back with you here. Before we start, let me just uh, issue a little demural. Uh, tomorrow I will be with thousands of others uh, on our own Tahrir Square in uh, Freedom Plaza in Washington. There will be thousands of us, 
And very much like the Wall Street protest, uh, we're a popular movement here. The revolution has begun. I, I compliment you for what you're doing down in Texas, but I don't see any real reason to uh, to cast dispersions on uh, on other movements. And the Wall Street group seems to be the real deal to me. Now, I don't want to argue the point, but I, I think that we need to have unity these days, especially as the re- revolution begins. And, and what I heard you say there just forced me to, to kind of give you... Well, my- Ray, I love it. I mean, I mean, I love it when people bring up counterpoints and... Uh, perhaps, I mean, obviously you didn't hear what I've said earlier. So let me give you the depth and breadth of what I'm saying. The White House has announced, moveon.org has announced, all these organizations have announced, that this is basically their re-election bid, uh, that, that they're going to try to take it over. And the way NPR, CNN, and MSNBC cover Occupy Wall Street is basically them calling for uh, wealth redistribution and class warfare. So... I'm nonpartisan, and I know about pressure from above and below. The Republicans say Wall Street can do no wrong. You know, the Democrats are acting like they're not financed by it and, and basically, you know, saying off with their heads and stuff. And we've got uh, Michael Moore running around saying capitalism is the problem. Well, capitalism didn't do this. A bunch of insiders ripping us off to this is a criminal matter. And so I agree with you that this is grassroots. The cops shouldn't be attacking them. I've got reporters there. I'm saying there is an attempt by the big unions and everybody to make this a wholly owned subsidiary of the Democratic Party, just like I talked about the Tea Party being grassroots and Republicans trying to take it over, right? I I agree with you completely. Uh, What I don't see is that, uh, well, that's actually where you come in. That's where the independent media comes in. That's where the Internet comes in. We can prevent this takeover. We can't prevent what Fox News or CNN says. But we can, and we will, mark my words, we're going to shut down this place, Alex. And when we shut down this place and the Washington Post can't get to their offices and the CNN can't do their their, their thing here, uh, people are going to have to take notice. And we, we owe nothing to move on. Move on has been a great disappointment to me ever since 2006 when they wouldn't shout out with me as Nancy Pelosi and uh, Reid were, were um, possibly uh, saying, oh, you know, we're doing the right thing. They wouldn't impeach Bush, and that was a travesty. That was the, where our democracy, democracy really fell down. So move on. It's, it's got nothing to do with this as far as I'm concerned. This is a real grassroots movement, and, uh, you know, I hope you're all like, glad you have people on Tucker Square here in, in Washington, and uh, I just am very, very uh, enthusiastic about that, and maybe I'm hypersensitive to early signs that there could be any division in this movement. Listen, I want to prosecute the the, the, the Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, uh, Wells Fargo, all the people that knowingly sold derivative crap. Mm-hmm. I want to claw back the bailouts. I do not want austerity to cut everybody's benefits to pay money into a derivative black hole. Yep. And I, I want to audit the Federal Reserve. Yeah, I want that too, but what I want even more, Alex is I want to repatriate the 58 cents on every dollar of tax money that we pay. I want to take that out of these feckless wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and wherever else, bring them back and tell the American people, look, you've been sold a bill of goods. It's not that we don't have enough money. We have enough money. It's just being given completely, or at least 58% worth, to the Pentagon. So once we repatriate that money, you don't have to fire your teachers anymore or your firefighters. You, you can you can balance your state budgets. That's the big notion. Are you pleased by Rand Paul keeping his promise as a libertarian conservative and calling for $500 billion cut in the Pentagon budget? Well, I sure am. I, I admire even more his dad because his dad tr- speaks truth. And when he talks about, you know, uh, how people need to reflect about why, you know, the real reasons why 9-11 happened and how we're looked at by the rest of the world. And then he gets booed for that. Well, I really admire Ron Paul for sticking his neck out there because he speaks truth. So, yeah, the Pauls, I think, are doing a pretty good job. I don't agree with a lot of what they say about domestic things, but that's neither here nor there. They're well, I think it comes down to this. Look. We don't want the control left anymore. We don't want the control right. We want real constitutional populism, and we should come together. And I want to be clear here. 
I am in 100 percent solidarity with people protesting the corruption of Wall Street and their out of control behavior and their and their and their kleptocratic activities. I'm simply pointing out there is an attempt by the establishment left, uh, the ones that love the wars and, and all the rest of it, to try to take this over. And that's what I've said. I, I am not saying overall it's bad or it's evil. I'm simply saying this is what I believe is important, and people can take my view or leave it. Uh, I'm saying let's go after the Federal Reserve, and so I'm trying to put my two cents in to what I hope is a second American revolution, a peaceful one of ideas. And when you see Goldman Sachs give $4.5 million the day before the Occupy Wall Street to the NYPD and the NYPD breaking people's arms and beating people over the head and pepper spraying women, Officer Tony Baloney, that's not a joke, folks, that's his real name, you know, that is wrong, and, it, and, and even the, the, the Chinese can now, uh, the, the communist Chinese leadership is criticizing us, saying, when we crack people over the heads, you get upset. So America is losing its moral authority. What can you say to that? I think, you're, you know, I agree with 99% of that. The only thing I wish to stress here is that we have the power, as the people, not to let the professional left take this thing over. We have been critical of places like Move On because of the timidity about the wars. And we, the people, the ones that are, are converging, I'm waiting for the, the delegation from the state of Minnesota to camp out in my backyard tonight, Colleen Rowley and the rest of them. Um, we're going to not let ourselves be taken over. And I think the folks in Wall Street are doing the same thing. They're right uh, two blocks away from Goldman Sachs. And today is going to be a major, major demonstration uh, with the with the involvement of not only thousands of students, uh, but trade unions. So I think we've got a really good thing going here, and I applaud your role in it, uh, Alex. But I just, you know, I just want to say that uh, uh, let's let's see how it unfolds. Uh, and, you know, call me, call me back in a month and ask me, Ray, were you able to prevent the professional left from taking this over? And I think I'm going to be able to say Yes, I was. Yes, we were, Alex. Well, I agree from what we've seen um, in New York, in San Antonio, where we have reporters and other places. Everybody there has transcended party. They understand the corruption of Wall Street through the intelligence agencies running the country, robbing everybody. They understand that. And they're not run by the professional left, as you call them. And it's really exciting. What I'm saying is mainstream media, who's losing their credibility, as you said, they are running this hoax that everybody basically, you know, just wants uh, free education or something. Instead of it, about going after these corrupt monetary uh, behemoths that are out there. But uh, shifting gears away from that, we've got big issues. Like you said, all these new wars. And uh, you talk about the stars lining up uh, for Israel to go into Iran uh, where do you see that going? Well, I think we're at a particularly perilous moment here, and uh, there's lots to be said about this. Uh, one is, uh, you know, the former head of Mossad, the uh, Israeli External Intelligence Agency, you know, he said back in May, look, uh, attacking Iran would be the, stu quote, the stupidest thing I've ever heard, end quote. Huh. Now, why would he say something like that? And why would he repeat that same that same line just two days ago? Well, the reason he's doing that is because there is an active bunch around Netanyahu that would very much like to take advantage of what they see as a spineless United States president in an election year and start a war with Iran and automatically, and I stress automatically, involve the United States in it. Why? Well, because Israel deathly needs something to divert attention from its strategic losses over this past year. They've lost Egypt. Now, this is no small thing. Egypt has 72 million people in it. Israel, what, 6 or 7 million? They lost in Lebanon four years ago. Yep, they lost in Turkey by, by their frivolous, by their stupid stupidity in, in killing eight Turks and one American on that first flotilla. So, and, you know, the, the Palestinians, a lot of them now, have adopted Martin Luther King's tactics of nonviolent resistance, and they, they massed around Israel's borders 
was on the on the uh, anniversary of the Nakba earlier this year. So Israel is in a new situation. I would suggest that it's in a more dangerous situation, more isolated than ever before. And so they need something. They need something to demonstrate that they're still real powerful. And by the way, you have sources all over Washington, but what you're saying is mirroring what Panetta said uh, just a few days ago. And, and so are you saying this from your own analysis or sources uh, or, or just reading what the Israelis are saying uh, that they are moving towards a green light uh, attack on Iran? Well, Panetta met with their defense.